टुडे इज आवर यूके मेंटरशिप सिंपोजियम डे टुमारो वी हैव आयरलैंड एंड नेक्स्ट वीकेंड वी आर डूइंग कैनेडा एंड यूएसए ओके वी हैव विथ अस फोर मेंटर्स हु वॉल्यूंटियर्ड एंड फॉर देयर टाइम ऑन अ सैटरडे आफ्टरनून सो आई थैंक यू ऑल फॉर योर टाइम I'll quickly give you an introduction to them, and then maybe they can introduce themselves and talk about their experiences in UK. We'll go through a list of questions that frequently we have received from students, and we'll have these mentors talk about it, and then we'll keep it open to Q and A towards the end. So today we have with us Anuj Dalvi, who is pursuing masters in AI at Queen Mary University in London. we have amrita who is doing phd in chemical biology at imperial college she had gone for a masters and now she is currently doing her phd we have got tanvi with us who is pursuing international business in kings and we have got amresh tiwari who's graduated with masters in engineering management from kings college london thank you guys for being with us uh, maybe you all want to quickly give an introduction and talk about your experience in uk in <coughs> in quick 2 3 minutes before we open we start with the session maybe we'll start with you anuj anything you want to talk about your experience and your background okay hello uh, am i audible yes you are perfectly clear so my name is anuj dalvi i did my undergrad uh, from father agnels college in washi in new mumbai and i did my undergrad in, in computer engineering and now i am doing my masters in artificial intelligence i was working uh, in lti for like 6 months and uh, anyways i wanted to do my masters but since i need needed to fill my gap between my uh, masters and my undergrad so i did uh, some job now uh, coming to the uk uh, first of all queen mary is an amazing university uh, no no regrets joining this university the only problem is uh, if you are doing a masters in uh, the uk you need to be a bit fast paced because it's a one year course so it's difficult to you know uh, catch up with everything like you have assignments every week in fact i am having assignments every day right now with all the coursework and uh, yeah i'll just uh, you know give more information as we proceed but uh, i'll just yeah that, that's it thank you thank you so much yes amrita you want to talk about your experiences hi yeah um so i did my undergrad from um dr bhanuvan nanavati college of pharmacy in mumbai um so yeah i did my undergrad in pharmacy and then i went on to do my masters at imperial college london um and that was a master masters in research in drug discovery and development so i think that'll be uh, if anyone has any questions about that especially um with msc's versus mres courses um that is something that i can touch upon later on um obviously really like the research culture and everything here and uh decided to apply for phd's and i'm currently doing a phd in chemical biology in the same department at imperial okay thank you for your time yes amresh can you quickly give an overview of yourself hi everyone my name is amrish tiwari and i'm currently done with my masters as of two days before i got my results and uh and through and i did my uh undergraduate in mechanical engineering from mumbai uh from tagore college of engineering and technology and then uh i i graduated in 2020 which kind of delayed my intake and i had to take the january intake year which is which is usually not the case as of how the universities in uk work it's only the cycle only starts from september and there's very less colleges who offer you courses starting in january so i started my course last year in january and now i'm done so that's that's the update and i'm also currently working as a technical consultant with one of the uh, merchant navy uh, company so that's the update as of now and the weather looks perfectly fine today so, nice yeah welcome yes tanvi over to you hi guys i'm tanvi um i'm studying international marketing at kcl 
and I have just a week of classes left and then some assignments and exams and then I'm going to be done. Uh, I'm going to start looking at summer internships now. Uh, and I plan to go back in September. Uh, that was my original plan. But then, uh, yeah, so I'm really not uh, looking for a job or anything. But then uh, I at least plan to do an internship before I go back. Okay. Welcome aboard. So let's let's go through the commonly asked questions first, and you know, then we'll move on to the students' ethic questions that they have. So first, we'll start with the university life. Okay. So maybe all of y'all can quickly give your or talk about your experiences about you know how do you go about choosing your electives? Is the curriculum very flexible? How different is it from your education in India? You you know most of you said you have assignments weekly and daily. So maybe you want to quickly talk about your experience in the college and how do you think uh, it's different from India and how should you prepare for the transition? So maybe we'll start in the same order that we've been going. Maybe Anuj, you want to start with yourself first? Yeah. Hello. Uh, Piyush is saying the audibility is uh, quite low. Is it the case for everyone? It seems quite fine to me. Okay. But maybe we'll try to speak up a bit. Yes, please continue. So uh, for me, uh, for me, it's quite hectic. I don't know. It's it's like it's a fault in me or it's for everyone. But uh, for me, the university life is quite hectic. We have so many events, ongoing events in the university, but I can't attend anyone because of all the coursework that's been going on. So what is uh, your uh, typical day like? How many hours of lectures do you have? Uh, so uh, sat we have off on Saturday, Sunday, but if you, if you take in the week, weekdays, uh, I have two lectures per day for like three hours or two hours, uh, including labs. And uh, per day, I need, if, if there are assessed quiz, then that's an extra. But uh, yeah, and after that, I need to do my assignments, like the ongoing assignments. Uh, that's the thing. So it covers up most of my days. So it's not like we don't we don't have any time for extracurricular or co-curricular activities, but yeah, if you it's not like your undergrad degree, obviously, again, because it's it's quite fast paced. How now, how flexible is it for you to choose electives and courses? Are the universities flexible? Do you have enough options to choose from? Uh, yeah, I had a plenty of options this semester because all my courses are elective. In the first semester, I had uh, three core modules: artificial intelligence, machine learning, and AI in games. And just one elective. Uh, I had five electives to choose from, and collect collectively choose one elective from those. You can also choose electives from you know relevant branches like computer science or data science, big data. Uh, it's not too restrictive regarding electives uh, regarding choosing the electives. But uh, and this semester I had loads of options for my electives, and I had to choose four from them, four from them. So choosing electives and the curriculum is it's quite flexible. Okay. And how do you prepare for the transition from, let's say, Indian study culture to the UK study culture? I'll suggest, you know, uh, I luckily I had a break from, I had, I'm a 2020 graduate, so I had one year uh, for my transition. So you need to do loads of courses, like you can use Udacity, for example, they have excellent courses. Now, uh, in India, we mostly the assignments, to be honest, most of them copy from, you know, our friends. But you can't do that over here. It's like plagiarism is quite strict over here. So that's one thing that you need to take care of about. And then even the level of assignments, you just don't, don't write journals. You have like proper assignments that we didn't see in India. So uh, courses like Coursera, courses from Coursera or Udacity might help a lot, uh, especially in my field in computer science or AI. Uh, that's the thing. And you can do most self projects. And these self projects help a lot while you're finding a job because okay. most of the job applications that are putting in, they are asking if you have any, you know, self projects or projects that you created out of your own interest that you can show. <clears throat> so building okay. a GitHub profile in, in the field of computers is very important. Okay, great. So Amrita, I'll ask the same question to you, but maybe a different flavor to it. Now, since you are doing a PhD, so do you think that doing a one-year master's gets too cumbersome or for someone who wants to do a lot of thesis or research, do you think that it's a one year is a disadvantage when you compare to other countries which have a two-year master's program where you can do a thesis and research for one more year? 
so do you think that uh, how do you how do you cope up with it and how do you think you get time to work with a professor in a short duration of a one year program uh right so i guess there's a few things there um so my masters was in mres which was the first three years so the from sorry uh so from september to december uh we had a few lectures and stuff like that uh we didn't have any exams throughout the course so most courses aren't like that but um the mres that i did didn't have any exams at all everything was assessed through um assignments and things so the first 3 months was a few lectures from um guest lectures from uh companies like gsk astrazeneca etc and we had to and so we selected our projects that we would be working on within the first month of joining and in december we had to submit like a 15 20 page literature review based on that project so you really get to know your project before you start working and then from jan through to um september when the course ended so those 9 months we were just in the lab and that was purely uh, research work so essentially the amount of time you get in the lab is almost the same as you would um in a two year masters because usually the second year is research however i guess the disadvantage in that is especially with phd applications um a lot of local students will do an mci course which is a three year bsc plus a one year masters and they sort of start their research earlier on in their course and with the deadline for phd applications which are usually around december and interviews around jan we don't have that experience with lab work and stuff at that point to be able to speak about it in interviews so i think that's where the major disadvantage comes in rather than the total amount of experience that you get understood got it and so how did you find the transition so you said there were no exams at all in your program so and everything was based on assignments so how easy or difficult was it to work on those assignments and what preparation would you i mean tell your juniors if you are coming to a program like that which which requires a lot of research and lab work how can they prepare themselves mentally or what can they do before they make the transition from india to uk right um so i guess yeah most of our assignments were they were quite large assignments based heavily on research either literature review or the work that we've done in the lab and i guess in india we don't get that sort of experience with um writing with scientific writing in general we're just copying journals and stuff like that um whereas here i mean especially like seeing some of the undergraduate teaching and stuff over here um they do get a lot of experience in like writing rap, lab reports in journal formats and stuff like that so if you can get the chance um during your undergrad try and work on some projects try and work on a review article um read papers as much as you can which is something we don't have to do too much um in an undergrad so just to understand what is expected how um scientific writing should be presented because no one's going to give you an introduction to that when you start a masters that's something you just have to pick up on yourself so having paper publications in your bachelor's degree or something would definitely add value um it would add value it's not it's not essential to have um it's more of, of course it would help but i think more for the experience and just it would it would help so much in being able to deal with these assignments later on got it okay cool thank you <coughs> okay so amresh you started in january instead of september because of the pandemic and you had to start one uh, semester late do you think it had an impact or the university made sure that all the courses were available available the professors were available so how do you you know if you have doubts and all how do you go are the faculties available do they have office hours do you right. do you you know suppose you are stuck up in your assignment how would you go about solving those issues 
Right. So uh, starting off with when I came here in January. So I was basically on board with students who started their course in September. And I basically did uh, semester two for them was basically my semester one. So I had to take the modules which were available then. And the college was really helpful in that way because they made sure that the modules which I take in my first semester are linked up somehow in my other semester, which I'll probably take with the new intake. So in January, I came here, I took, uh, I had to take two uh, core modules, uh, which were uh, like towards the management side of the uh, industry. So it was principles of management and operations management. And then with, with that, I had to take two other technical modules. So in that, to be honest, uh, when I took the modules, I, I, I did not do much research. So it, it was basically, I, I, we had to choose our modules before we came on, came on board to the course. And this is, this is a point where I would like to tell everyone that any optional module you take, do not just go by the name of the module because the the name could easily be say i the one the one i took was computer vision and i'm from a mechanical background it's like nowhere related to what i studied i guess anuj would relate to this so i basically took it because uh there was no option for me because others were like cyber security related and stuff like that which were like that that kind of scared me so i took computer vision i read a small description on the uh website of the college uh in in the program details it said that it will basically have a little bit of coding and like it'll be more of uh it'll be more of uh mathematical stuff i was like all right maths is fun i took the module i came here and it had lots and lots of coding because it, it basically depends on who is the professor who is going to teach the module so the professor was from the department of data science and he was like really into the subject so he basically made uh, a really tough paper in the end and the, the assignments were really difficult so this this is a this is a feedback i would like to give that do your research properly know your modules and you you can anytime if you want to you, if you're not sure about a module you can anytime uh, get in touch with the uni and you can tell them that this is the module i'm planning to take could you provide more information about what will be actually taught in this module so that when you come here, you're not stuck. Got so, it. yeah. So, so one question now, see, since most of these programs are one year programs, how do you connect with your seniors, right? Because the seniors right. would have graduated by the time you join in. So, you know, if you want to know about a module or something, you know, from a senior, how do you go about doing that? So how do you for network? me, yeah. So for me, I, I remember because when I came in here, that's when they started the post-study visa thing. And there were not much people going to the UK, even in college porn, when I, when I asked like, uh, that's right. People to, yeah. So I remember asking uh, Jamit that I, I've got offers from these four universities, which one should I take? He was like, take Kings. It's a good college. And then I took it and I, I asked him that, do you have any seniors over there? And then I, I remember there was just three of them and, and you could get like, lots and lots of seniors who are in the us but not in the uk so for me it was quite a task to get in touch with people who are uh, doing their masters from not who are seniors from not from india but like uh, uh, elsewhere in the in the world so i had to connect them uh, connect to them from linkedin so linkedin is a really powerful tool i would recommend and i i i personally i, I also get certain messages on linkedin i am sure that Amrita, Tanvi and Anuj, they might also have been getting the messages on LinkedIn. So I personally feel that LinkedIn is a really powerful tool and you can connect to like lots and lots of seniors and definitely College Pond is there. They have like lots of seniors abroad. So this this is, this is would be my uh, one okay. key thing that can try to network as much as you can and find seniors as much as you can. Okay. Thanks for your answers, Amrish. So, Tanvi, how easy is it to score grades or get good grades in, you know, the kind of education that you have in UK? I mean, how do you go about planning your education, juggling out with your maybe on-campus jobs or other things with assignments, cooking? How do you manage all these things and make sure you get good grades at the same time? 
so for me it was initially when i came it was very difficult because i'm actually a company secretary and then i worked for a year and then i completely changed my field so then the method of teaching was different uh method of getting graded was different and of course my field completely changed so uh so for that initially i think what would have helped me if i would have uh, just seen uh what kind of assignments they have before like i had no idea of what writing an essay was what plagiarism was what what was i mean, i had no idea about citations and then they have to be in like a proper order and all of that and for these little things they actually cut a lot of marks but then okay. they give you very nice feedback so then that actually helps you in the exam too and uh, so with everything else managing time in sem 1 it wasn't so difficult because i had classes just for an hour every day and uh, and then most of the content was on so we have this platform called keeps for kings so then uh, we had recorded lectures there so we had to watch that and then attend lectures so it wasn't so bad but then in sem 2 we started having 3 hours of lectures every day that's when it got hectic uh, it takes some time to kind of find the balance between eating out and cooking but then i think you figure it out <laughs> eventually okay great uh, another question for you how easy is it to get scholarships out there and how do you apply for scholarships or rata ga opportunities so for kings uh, i think they keep on emailing you a lot of stuff once you get an offer so then they just get, keep on sending you a lot of links for me even for i, I don't know where for what that was but then um, so they are constantly in touch with you so then it's not so difficult if you just uh, keep on checking your email regularly or just go to the site then you can see the options for scholarship or many other things actually many opportunities and how do you go about it so you just you need to write essays you need to give interviews or they are merit based or on the basis of your first semester performance do you get a scholarship in second year how does it work uh, so for your frankly i'm not so sure because my course was just like a one year masters so then but but i think for scholarships you need to give uh, your scores from your undergrad that's what they need and then okay. they have some rules so okay and then i think you sometimes you also have to show your uh, proofs of your uh, financial background and all of that so it's just a lot of data that you have to provide them got it. but it's easy okay great so another question talking about the classes what's the diversity in the classroom i mean what's the batch size like and you know i mean what's the student faculty ratio or you know how many people usually in a yeah. class how many indians what's the diversity what's the environment out there so our course is around 160 people so then and in sem 1 we had all compulsory modules so then we were divided in i think four to five groups uh so our sessions are accordingly and then mostly there are a lot of indians uh and there are a lot of other asians too but then uh, so they put you in in the uh, i mean they put you into groups on their own initially so then there's a lot of diversity because they obviously make it a point that you have people from different countries that you can actually talk to and do projects with but in sem 2 they gave, uh, gave us a choice to make groups with people but i think it's always better if you try uh, talking to other people and not just indians that's obviously your comfort zone but then you don't really grow i mean there's no point of coming out then agree to that agree yeah. agree okay great and Thank you. continue yeah. sorry please continue yeah and so we are we have around 30 to 35 people in one batch not more than that so then it's uh, it's really easy to talk to the professor it's not like in india where you have 100 students sometimes in a class then it gets difficult to kind of communicate okay great yeah. thank you for your answers so yeah. coming back to you anuj right how often do you interact with professors how often do you meet them and you know i mean how do you go about to do you choose a course on the basis of a professor or you just you know choose a course on the basis of the curriculum okay so in the first semester i couldn't judge a professor because you don't know how well they are how well they teach even if they they have an excellent profile so in the first semester i just chose my elective based on my interest that is computer vision now uh, in machine learning the professor was a bit uh meticulous or you, not meticulous you can say uh, a bit you know boring so he couldn't teach well now in second semester even though i wanted to do uh, his subject uh, i was interested in his subject but i didn't choose because he uh, he couldn't teach well he couldn't teach that well so uh, based on the first semester i could judge 
uh, uh, my electives for the second semester. And the thing with professor is you can interact with them every day. They are available on or they are available on email every day. We have Slack channels for uh, you know interaction. There are demonstrators that you can talk to about you know silly doubts, and uh, you can always approach the professor in your lectures, which happens like every day. I meet my professors, so it's not a big uh, deal to communicate with your professor. There's not such a barrier. Okay, yeah. nice. And what is the your batch size, the diversity in your classroom? Maybe you want to talk about that. Yeah, so uh, this year they increased a lot of uh, you know the batch size for especially for AI. Uh, so we have almost hundred uh, people in our uh, lectures uh, in our uh, course. But if, if you take out electives, like uh, in my electives, there are like mostly thirty to thirty five people in each electives. And uh, the diversity, obviously, there are there's, there are a lot of Indians in our course, uh, and uh, Queen Mary is known for its diversity. There are many people from you know different part of the world in this university. So, uh, if you take into diversity as a factor, it's like uh, fifty percent of people are non uh, Brits. So, okay, yeah, <clears throat> fine. And how do you go about searching for, say, on-campus jobs? Do a lot of students do on-campus jobs to take care of their living expenses? Um, finding an uh, on-campus job, especially in my university, is quite difficult for a postgraduate student because most of the jobs are given to the undergrad students who live on campus, so they can work, uh, you know, as uh, uh, including the small fields like. Uh, you know, resident associate or something. But if you look at, uh, you know, demonstrate. If you look at the position of demonstrators, you can get a job as a demonstrator uh, for undergrad students. Uh, but that too, I won't say that it's easy to get the, those jobs because uh, if you look at the size of hundred people, uh, and you know there are only five demonstrators for that course, it's difficult to get because most of the people are applying for that that job. So it's not that difficult. It's it's difficult to get. A job as a demonstrator. So, or... can you can you work off campus to mm -hmm. you know make some money or something like that as a student, or you only have to work on campus? No, you can work off campus. Uh, so, I used to work at a pub called Weather Spoons. I was a bar associate there. Great. I so, free drinks for you? Uh, sadly, I don't drink, but yeah, oh, okay. you get you get drinks. Yeah, you get meals and everything. Meals are sorted over there, and uh, you get actually a good pay. I used to get eleven pounds per hour. Okay. And uh, it's it's more than enough to sustain yourself over here. Okay. But uh, the thing is, uh, since the courses are so fast paced, it's difficult to you know uh, catch up with you know your curriculum and as well as uh, go for a job. And but if your job is flexible and uh, uh, they are happy to you know allocate you according to your your uh, okay. time, it's fine. And uh, I'll also suggest there is an app called Stent. Where you uh, work? How do you spell it? S T I N T. Stint. stint okay. Okay. So uh, over there, I I do stints now. Where you work for like you put in your availability. So if I'm free tomorrow Sunday at twelve to four, I put in my availability. <clears throat> and if there is a stint uh, available at from twelve to four, it pays you ten pounds per hour, and um, you can just go over there for four hours. You can work over there, and then come back. You get paid for. And pounds. what kind of job would be there? So they put in the job description and everything, and they match you with your requirements. Sadly, it's just hospitality industry that's that's putting up jobs over there. You don't okay. get any technical fields over there. It's okay. like, uh, you know, bar associates or you know, waiter or anything. Got it. Okay. Fine. And it's also indeed indeed flex over here, but mostly people do stint. There's limbo. There's couple. There's loads of option for. You know, or to sustain. So, do yourself. most of the people who are working usually about what ten to twenty hours a week? Do most of the students work? So, if you are doing a a full time, uh, if you are doing a part time at uh, you know a side restaurant, suppose with the spoons where I was working, you mostly they will do eighteen to twenty hours per week for sure. But uh, like my friends, most of us do stands or cookbill, so we don't get to work that much. We we work like ten hours or fifteen hours or something. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Fine. Okay. Thanks for your answers. Yeah. So, Amresh, so yeah. a question for you now. Okay. Again, on the same lines, mm. what's the diversity in the classroom? Number one. And number two, does work experience play a very important role? Do you think that coming as a fresher or coming with work experience is going to make a difference in how you approach your education? Right. So, the for, for the first one, uh, I think 
it depends on like course to course especially in kings because it's like if you are say what i i i noticed was uh, for my particular course there were just 10 to 15 indians uh, whom i know and most of the people were asians from like basically china and i i i think uh, there there used to be 300 plus attendees when it used to be online for my particular one of the one of the modules and uh, most of them were, were basically overseas students or who are, who are doing it remote to be honest so i feel it it, it basically depends from like what was the trend going on so i when when i came here to do engineering with management it was like uh, a really good course uh, even in, even in india now it's i, I have a lot of uh, people who like uh, ask me how is the course and it how like basically if you do a really technical course so you you tend to like move a bit away from it after four years so that's exactly what happened with me i, I was doing like proper core mechanical and after four years i kind of like burned out and i wanted to like move towards the management aspect of the industry to like basically grow into something that's more of like consulting thing so but yeah the diversity is it's again uh it, it's just like it's really really diverse you have like people from all over the world and mostly what what i saw in my particular course were asians and for the second question i feel i i mean i did not have any work ex so i came here directly after my uh, undergraduate and how i see the market here is they the people when say say if you attend a career fair they basically ask you what have you really done it, it doesn't really matter that you have I mean, if you have like say three plus or four plus years of work, it, it definitely plays a re really uh, uh, good. It puts you in a good spot basically, because you have like you you have, you have faced the client and you have done like good uh, you have good amount of work. X. But but then again, I, what I saw and what uh, I got asked in interviews were mostly related to my projects and how 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 did it help me to like think innovatively or how did I implement it. So. I think if you have like good projects and if you have something to speak about and if you have like something to defend your like course or if you say that okay I I have zero work X but these are my projects these are something that I'm being working on so I I I feel that it it can be it can be a a really a good point for someone so it it can also then depend on the course what you're planning to do. So for my course, the, the university, they usually, they put it on the description that if we are coming for this course, we expect that you have a year of work experience and that, that kind of makes it a bit clear. So I, I applied for the same, uh, title in UCL as well, but I got rejected because they wanted someone who has a year of work X and then they come here to study the course. So. I feel that way again it it comes down to doing a proper like research about what you really want to do. Okay, got it. So if you if I have to ask this question to you, how many people in your class cohort actually had work experience before they came? So uh out of like 20 to 30 people, I really know. Uh most of them were a year or two elder than me. Okay. So essentially they had <clears throat> some work experience so they they were kind of like at at a better place so they had something to put on their cv so do you think that really matters like if is it becoming too competitive if you are the one who doesn't have work experience or it's how well you pull yourself out and you know you crack your interviews yeah that's i feel i feel that's the way it is like you really need to like know how how the industry is working because if say if you if you don't have any work ex then you basically look out for routes or job uh schemes so there, there's this thing known as graduate scheme and you basically apply for it and you get on a scheme with the company for two years so basically in those two years the company will train you mold you and teach you everything what you need to do and once that is done and if you are a really good performer they will like give you a proper like full time as an employee role. So 
when you have no workex these are the certain like uh, pathways you can get on and then basically apply to those kind of roles obviously you can't apply to like mid senior level roles because that will require workex on your cv got it okay yeah cool thank you so amrita a question for you now maybe it's a little bit off track where do students usually stay how do you find your apartments your roommates uh i mean do you stay on campus or do most of the students stay off campus how, how do you all go about uh, figuring that out your your living lifestyle you know your grocery shopping and all could you throw some light on the lifestyle over there yeah uh so in terms of accommodation and stuff there are a lot of options usually on campus accommodation tends to be allocated to undergraduates um especially in london there are a lot of um, privately owned uh, student accommodations i'm pretty sure there are across the country as well and so you can stay in one of those that's what that's sort of the accommodation i'm living in right now um and yeah at the moment like i have my studio within one of those private accommodations so it's quite nice comfortable you have your own space so usually uh, most of the students stay off campus only right no one usually yeah. stays on campus it's again it depends i know um i had a friend at kings and i think they offered some on campus accommodation um i think kingston does offer on campus accommodation so you can choose to take up the option if your university offers it um it can be a little bit more expensive okay uh and how do you go about searching for apartments so are there some websites that you can refer to or the university helps you out or how does that work? uh yeah so a lot of people usually find their roommates beforehand and like look for apartments together even if you can't do that uh there are websites where you can just search for rooms within a within an apartment to rent out and then you'll be flatmates with whoever's already there um so sites like uh spare room can help with that uh zoopla um essentially just put it into google and <laughs> you'll get a Got bunch it. of options okay. um <clears throat> and how about yeah. your eating and grocery and cooking do you get indian food easily out there i mean yeah. i know being in london it should not be a problem yeah as, especially in london very very easy to get indian food um i don't have any indian stores as such nearby but um most supermarkets will have your general stuff that you need really um what i like to do is i usually just like do a big batch of cooking on weekends to get me through the week um but yeah eating out can become very expensive um again especially in london uh so yeah you sort of have to like find a balance and yeah got it uh, and do most of the people stay close to the campus and then then take the public transportation out there uh yeah i mean it it varies quite a lot it's sort of, i think especially d- doing a phd people are sort of more settled in their life and have partners and stuff who they live with um and they might live a little bit further away um if you're here specifically for your education you'll try to sort of stay close at a campus got it. so now being a one year program at a masters level or uh, do most people get to do internships or they just graduate and then start for a full time job hunt or something like that because you know usually being a one year program i don't think you can squeeze in a winter internship or do people do no. that no no it's very hard to get internships um i i don't know how it is with other courses but especially with my masters we only got a couple of weeks off for christmas and it was straight back to research um you don't get too many holidays as such as you would in other countries maybe uh we get maybe one week for christmas one week for easter uh so there's no time to actually do an internship um i think like amrish mentioned uh graduate schemes are quite a good option in that case if you want to sort of get experience as a fresher and sort of then try and get absorbed into the company okay got it fine okay 
so let's move on to some more questions you know related to jobs and salaries and all because a lot of people who end up going abroad would want to work abroad as well so maybe i'll start with tanvi i know you said you are not too keen on working abroad but how's the general trend like people in your class i'm sure many of them would be job hunting so with the post graduate work permit that started in uk uh how, how does that go about it i mean you can take any type of job or the job you take is limited to the field you go into or you know it's a, so for example in various countries if you go to usa you are a mechanical engineer you need to take a mechanical job only you go to canada a mechanical engineer can graduate and start working as a banker in a bank right so are you limited to the jobs for your domain only or you can hunt out for internships jobs start your own business you know what what's the trend like what do most of the people do uh very honestly i right tell the people in my course are very confused uh, uh because uh, everyone has just started applying for jobs so then it's very soon to say but then uh, i can give the example of my brother of course he was in the us but uh, so he is a mechanical engineer he studied engineering management and then now his first job was in supply chain management so it was very difficult from the technical side of it so when you are i don't think uh, uh people actually narrow down initially initially i think you need to keep all your options open and then actually see what you want to do because for me so even for my internship i want to do something with a uh, luxury brands so then i'll start with that but then if it's not so easy for me to get into uh, get internship at one of the luxury brands then i might shift to something else so i think you need to really keep your options open because frankly or the chances of getting internships and jobs i mean it it is a bit difficult it's okay. not impossible but it is difficult so when you say it's difficult does the career center yeah. help you or do you have career fairs in the university where companies come to recruit how does the recruitment scene work no so uh, i haven't been to any one of the affairs but then they tell you how to uh, make a, a strong cv where to apply how to apply but then i at least for my course i don't think that we had anyone coming in to actually help with that you have to do all the application on your own but then you can just uh, try and understand how to make your cv stronger by going to one of these fairs and then you just need to keep on talking to a lot of people and just try to understand what works for them and this is totally off topic but then accommodation wise i think it's better if you um, not take university accommodation because that way you meet a lot of different people so then i have a lot of friends who are architects someone uh, people are studying design so then from them to it's uh, it's easy to understand that what they did differently and how did they get a job got your point Plus, so, yeah got yeah got it okay. yes yes so, so it's easier so 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 you are basically looking at luxury brand management if that doesn't work yeah. out you will keep your self open yeah. to other kinds of jobs as well so yes. it's not limited to you know hey i have to because i have done international Correct. business my job needs to be in the same domain so there is no Correct. limitation per se yeah yeah so people apply because i know my friends have already applied they apply to a lot of places and then they get a call back just from one or two places so then you need to really you need to be persistent in this case got it okay <clears throat> and uh, does the career centers openly you know they tell you these are the companies that are recruiting maybe you should be applying your or you know your career center is not that proactive it is proactive but then i think it focuses more on uh, how to develop like better soft skills and then how okay. to focus more on cv and all of that so it's not more on the companies i don't think it's on the companies because it depends person to person Got because it. not everyone yeah not everyone wants to go to a certain field right so then it's very generic the information that they give out got it okay cool yeah. thank you so anuj coming back to you so how do you think you know things are different so like in india you have colleges uh, companies coming to colleges for placement and you know you get placed directly out of college so how is it different at say queen mary's like our companies coming directly there to recruit or like tanvi said you have to go out and hunt on your own do you look or do you look at recruiters for recruitment do you network how do you go about with the job hunt so basically in queen mary we have a, a section called queen mary career and enterprise where they post in uh, various jobs uh, each week 
and uh, there's a website for that where you can just go and uh, you can uh, look at the job descriptions of various company various companies they uh, there's also a career career guidance uh, prof uh, uh, expert who will uh, guide you through what like, what what all you need to do in uh, in something related to your cv or uh, your your profile everything so they'll take care of you know uh, handling with your cv or they'll give you suggestions about you know uh, various jobs that are open for your field or even if you're confused with what you need to do you can just ask them like uh, what field should i pursue if i'm interested in this 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 now there uh, there's no such thing called as placement over here because companies don't come and you know they put on their stalls and they tell you that we have an open position uh, there are various websites called bright network which provides uh, you know graduate jobs graduate jobs are uh, like excellent for people who are just starting the, with their career like me uh, it's like even if i'm doing artificial intelligence i can go into you know uh, being in telecommunication so one of my senior who was doing chemical engineering is now uh, are doing uh, he is now an engineer in british telecommunication so uh, since graduate jobs don't expect you to know much about certain positions uh, it's quite easy for people who are new to uh, these fields like who don't have any experience now uh, there are various other jo job uh, searching portals like you know uh, total jobs the uh, as i told you bright networks and then ota there are like tons of job recruitment agencies but uh, most of them the only problem is most of them ask for a five year you know uk visa so uh, if you don't have like a proper five year visa if you're not a resident of the uk it's quite difficult it's more difficult for you obviously uh, but yeah psw has made it much easier for us uh, so now with pgwp you have two years to stay back right yeah and so you can stay back for two years even without a job you could just sit at home and do nothing for two years if you want to am i correct yeah but like if you want to sustain yourself you can work uh, in a, a restaurant or something but for two years you can it's like you get two more years to find a job so in that so window, once you get a job in those two years how does that work now so then you ask your recruiter to transfer you to a employment visa how does that work? so now uh, suppose if i am uh, applying for a job uh, in the interview they ask me if you have a like if you have a work visa uh, generally like my professor my, my career guidance officer told me that just don't tell them that you have a psw work visa uh, at the start so if they are giving you a sponsorship at, in, initially it's great it's fantastic but like if they don't give you like sponsorship at first just ask them for like just tell, tell them that i have psw work visa for, for two years and then if you get into the company uh, the company will you know judge on the basis of your performance that if, if they want to keep you for a, a bit longer and then according to that they'll switch your visa to you know work permit visa like tier 2 visa i guess so okay. it depends on your performance if you are eligible if you uh, can continue with the uh, company it's they they transform your visa from psw2 okay got it good thank you so amresh i know you have graduated so you would be a yeah. better person to talk about the same thing you know with yeah. you are currently job hunting and you are working yeah. part time as well so you know how easy is it you know with the with, with you know the college placement and how can talk about your experience of yeah. job hunting yeah. when is the right time to start job hunting okay like should you start off in the first semester maybe in the Chris, in the christmas break or you build your cv in the first semester and then start applying for jobs in second semester could you run me about what is do you think you could have done better or maybe some words of advice for your juniors yeah sure so the first thing i would like to share is that you need to learn how to uh, wake up to rejections from jobs <laughs> so that is something so it's some things are like really not in your control so say for example i initially started with applying on linkedin so you you basically when you start applying you start to do a bit of market uh, analysis so if i'm say applying in a particular sector i first need to see how is the sector growing in this particular country so say i personally got Uh, really really interested in uh, sustainability and net zero carbon so 
in january i basically i started looking for like opportunities or small short term internships over summer it's really difficult to find short term internships because again it's a really hectic course you you'll get you'll get just i think a month of break in between your semester so i came in my i did my first semester and then i had to submit my dissertation with the people whom i started my uh, course with because they were going to pass out that year so i basically gave in my dissertation before my final semester was uh, due so uh, in that summer break i remember I, i got this opportunity to attend a summer school so summer schools are like short short uh, short period of say learning experiences where you meet new people and you uh, say share your own ideas and thoughts so that that although it was just a month of uh, summer school yeah, i i i can still show it on like my cv it was some experience i gave in my thoughts i gave in my uh, ideas and we built this thing and so it, it's ba- it basically counted as a really good experience so that's how you start like applying and looking for jobs so i started with uh, linkedin so linkedin okay. again you can go into the job section you can set alerts you can like uh, go on to uh, one one thing that you can I, i would suggest everyone should do is go on the company's website directly on the company's website they have a really good careers portal for us with all the values their vision and everything so go go and read that and then most of the companies what they need here is your motivation they want to know that okay you you're from uh, so i i had this friend he did his bsc over here in geography so i i i feel i i never heard this thing in india a uh, bsc in geography that that guy got placed in hsbc as a bank uh, bank analyst or something so it, it was completely like apart from what he had studied but he was uh, he was so like confident about his motivation to get the job and uh, basically uh, pitch himself uh, so well that he he got placed in like a, a banking uh, a banking company so when you are applying do you need to have a covering letter and a resume both for your applications to the job uh, various jobs or so, various portals uh, i i feel cover letter is not compulsory but they usually put an option to uh, i i would personally suggest that a cover letter would definitely like put you you know in a good spot so if you like uh, use a cover letter it's is usually a page long over here and even a uh, resume the the cv and the resume is here it depends on from like industry to industry so for my particular uh, industry it's they they accept two pages uh, of cv so usually it's just one page but you can also submit uh, pages of like two pages of cv and cover letter i would suggest that it it is helpful yeah it, it, it is really helpful because you are you basically get a chance to tell your story okay what, what you have done and how you you're planning to like move ahead in your career so i would suggest that you you should like have a really strong cover letter to okay now But since you already, sorry, sorry. since you already yeah. graduated right maybe you can talk about it and maybe if i mean approximate numbers how many people approximately or from your batch actually ended up getting jobs so right now uh, as I, i got done now which is kind of off cycle for okay. the uh, for the for the job jobs uh, sectors over here so i will basically actively start applying when i get towards like september of this year because that's when the uh, right cycle for job starts Okay. So that's when most of the uh, hrs are active and they re- start recruiting actively okay uh out of the people i know most of them are they, they have most of us we have like part time jobs but we we, we are really not like uh, keen to keep it as a solid option we with that we are applying actively now because now like we have we have uh, the the status of the uh, the the course is now from predicted to like achieved now so it it also happens that when you submit your cv on certain sites it automatically gets rejected because uh some companies they want you to achieve your uh, masters first and, and then get, apply yeah and then apply so I, i one one thing i would say is that you it's it's really demotivating at times when you wake up in the morning and you see like 10 rejections but 
uh, over, over the time you you get you get so numb to the uh, pain of this that you 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 understand that it's all right to uh, get rejected i i i'll keep on applying i'll keep on trying i mean i i i'll be honest with you i i think i, I keep i basically keep a track on uh, on how, on what like or what portals i'm applying or what jobs i'm applying on an excel sheet to like see that okay i've applied to this thing now if this hr calls me at least i know that i, I had applied this was the time and i, I basically have to keep a track that when when because it happened with me that one of the hrs called me he was like okay you applied for this role and i was like mm, uh, i think i did and then basically i i had no track about it because you, you at, at after a point you start applying blindly so, so, so based on your experience which portal you have had a better success rate in terms of at least getting an interview call any portals that you would recommend other than linkedin uh i think i not said most of them but i would say that there's a total job there's indeed there is uh there's there's tons of uh, recruitment agencies as he said so you can basically register on them and just create an account put in your cv and if if like something matches the good thing is that the hrs they actually like call you up and tell you so i one of the uh, companies i applied to i i don't know how but my, the email id was not shown in the uh, in in my cv and i got a call from the hr just to say that you you have a really strong cv i, I just had one question from you why did you not put your email id on the cv okay so okay. Th- the good thing is that they actually want to help you Understood. so it was kind of a like They, they, he actually wanted to help me that you you should like put in your email id i and he made he made sure that i i know that there's something missing on it got it okay so yeah that's insightful thank you for your insights so amrita uh, maybe a little bit off track point of questions for you because you you were always thinking from a research point of view so how easy is it to convert your masters to a phd do you think it's easy or you know you need to reapply again or you know if the universities are accepting how do you go about with the application process for that uh yeah so you can't convert your masters to a phd you have to apply separately altogether um the application process for phd's is okay so that there's a lot of different ways to go about it there's a lot of different ways to get funding and i think you sort of just have to be in the situation before you actually fully grasp all the different uh things that are involved um so i think the primary thing is to get in touch with uh professors and things like that uh i so usually the the big set of deadlines are in december to up, uh to apply for phd's it's not always easy to have a strong application at that point so i had to take a year out after my masters i worked for a year and then um applied again for the next year and so just to give a bit of perspective the first time that i applied so that was while i was doing my masters i didn't uh i had one offer but there wasn't any funding attached to it etc um the second time i applied um a year after i had three offers um one was this one at imperial i had one from the university of cambridge and one from uh the institute of cancer research so for these three programs the process that i went through was very very different for the one at imperial i um contacted um my now supervisor got in touch with her asked her about what projects are on- ongoing in her group and if there are any opportunities and then i applied for a scholarship separately um and she backed that application so well, do you think emailing professors and connecting with them definitely helps in terms of increasing oh 100% 100% yeah i th- i think it's almost essential um especially for phd's i i don't think it's as important for masters 
um, for PhDs, you definitely have to get in touch with professors. And even if they don't have a position at that point, maybe something opens up later on. And if they like you, if they like your CV, they'll get in touch with you afterwards. Um, the funding situation, however, for PhDs is, is very challenging. The, a lot of scholarships and things are restricted to um, local students. So that the number of options that you have is quite limited. Uh, so, so it can be very competitive. Um, just to talk about like a different kind of path to it, the Institute of Cancer Research, for example, they had a very different application process wherein you apply to the institute rather than to a professor. And they have a round of interviews and they match you up with projects and professors and things like that. So again, it, it varies so much and it depends so much on your field. So the idea is to apply early. You want to make sure your application is done by November, December, right? Uh, yes. That, I mean, positions keep opening up throughout the year, but a majority of them will usually be around December. Okay. So what next after PhD? What do most of the PhD students do after they are done with the PhD? Do most of them end up in academia or they end up taking up jobs in the market? What, what's the scenario out there? What are your seniors doing? Maybe you can throw some light on the same. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, quite a few people do decide to um, do a, to work as a postdoctoral research associate. Um, that is probably like the sort of standard path. Um, a lot of people work, uh, decide to go into industry. So they get um, positions as scientists and senior scientists at, um, within my field, it, that would mostly be in pharmaceutical companies. Uh, and then some people decide to just change path completely, go into things like consulting and stuff. And again, like with a PhD, you can start at a much higher position than you would with a bachelor's degree. Got it. Okay. So how's the pharma industry overall, right? I mean, you spoke about companies like AstraZeneca and GSK and all, you know, so I mean, how's the, how's the job situation in general from a pharma point of view? If someone is not thinking of a PhD, but only from a job point of view, so looking at your peers, your people you did your master's with, do you think that the job situation is something that a student can look forward to in the pharma industry? Um, yeah, so again, like with the general job situation here, it, it is quite challenging. I think the major research company here is GSK. Those, um, the majority of people within um, my field that I see uh, going into industry, GSK is probably the number one. But a lot of people, um, move to other parts of Europe as well. And then there are companies like AstraZeneca, Boehringer and stuff like that, that um, employ. There are major like biotech research hubs around Cambridge, Oxford and London. And those have a lot of startups, which are good opportunities. Um, and then like a lot of life science biotech companies and things like that. So, so there definitely are opportunities, I think. With research, you sort of tend to get very specialized and very narrow in the kind of jobs you look for. So I think like the others were saying you apply to hundreds of jobs and keep a spreadsheet. That's not so much the case with our field where you will maybe be applying to five or 10 jobs that actually match your profile. Got it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, so back to you, Tanvi. Are you there? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So in general, just a quick question on, you know, what are, what are the kind of salaries that people expect, you know, when you're looking at maybe part-time jobs and again, when you're looking at full-time jobs, I know it varies depending on the college, the field, but just any ballpark numbers that you can throw across as to what amount can a student expect. So, you know, a lot of people think what's the return on investment. So how much will I be spending in my master's and what the starting salaries are. So maybe if you could throw an approximation of what the cost of education has been for you and what are the approximate salaries that you hear people getting in your field? Uh, so 
so i can only talk about part time jobs frankly because sure, no i problem. i still haven't applied yet so i don't want to give you wrong numbers so part time jobs uh, as someone said i think the minimum is 10 to 11 pounds per hour okay and uh, so as a student if just for the living cost if you want to earn i think that will be more than enough if you work uh, for a few so what are the, the approximate living expenses per month per month uh, so for me it's around 800 to 1000 pounds per month Okay, so if you are working at about ten yeah. pounds an hour or something, and you work, yeah. so for eighty hundred hours a week, yeah. a month, you can take care yeah. of your living expenses completely. Yes, I think you can manage it. Got it. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. And when people look at full time jobs, you know the salaries would definitely be much more again, depending on the uh, field that you are in. I'm guessing. Yeah, I think the uh, biggest issue that people have here is the rent because it's very expensive. So then, if at all you think of working in the city and then staying away, that way you save rent. Of course, you have yeah. to travel, you have to spend uh, some amount on travel, but it's better because rent is, I think, the biggest uh, expense that people have here. True, London will be definitely yeah. more expensive. Yeah, a lot of people might move out to the suburbs as well. Yes, but as, as a student, I think it's best if you stay in London if you want to experience uh, London properly. At least, if you're doing masters for your, uh, I suggest that it's better to stay in central London. Okay, got it. A uh, uh, off-track question coming back from an application point of view, right? Any advice that you want to give to your juniors who are thinking of applying to UK? Should you apply in round one, round two? Anything they need to make sure they do properly during their application point of view when applying to colleges. application wise so i think september intake is better weather wise and if, for everything else because there are a lot of people coming in in uh, more people coming in in september than january so then it does a better chance of meeting people uh, application wise it's just it's, it's just better if you uh, so the counselors that we talked to in college one it's better if you give them your own ideas because if them you if if you ask them to write everything on their own then because it's obvious we got to be similar because it's still coming from the same person so you need to give them your ideas and try to make your application a little bit different so what's the right time to way. apply do you think yeah. applying early increases your chances of getting in yes definitely because uh, so my uh, first choice was imperial second was king but then for imperial uh, they needed a lot of work ex i think for marketing at least and then i've had friends who applied around a year and half before and then even the slots got full for that particular okay. course so so for example marketing and business are very common courses so then they get full very quickly so then it's better that you apply earlier because then there's a greater chance of you getting in under so for imperial i applied very late and then i spoke okay. to people who got in and they're like we applied a year and a half ago understood got it earlier okay. yeah. earlier the better got it okay great thank you for your answers so anuj maybe you want to throw some light on you know when people are graduating if you can throw light on what kind of salaries are they looking at okay because they also want to understand one okay so what is your total expense been at queen mary's for example for your entire masters let's just talk tuition fees and then what are the salaries that people expect so they can correlate and figure out whether it's a good return on investment okay i'm spending maybe 100 rupees and i'm gonna get back those 100 200 rupees over a period of 3 4 years so they get a realistic expectation of what's happening out there again i know these are just ballpark numbers because they'll vary from student to student college to college and job to job but maybe if you can throw some light based on your experiences yeah so basically i'll i'll uh, all the numbers i'll be giving will be in the field of computers or ai fine no problem so my fees are uh, 27000 approximately 27000 27500 something pounds okay. uh, for the whole tuition fee so and we are looking at let's say about 30 lakh rupees or your tuition fee yeah and you pay I, per semester or you pay everything one go in the first year itself so you can sit down with the financial officer and you can uh, lay out the uh, payment plan as you wish so you can uh, pay out the inst in installments i paid a full fee and i got a discount of okay. i guess 1% but uh, yeah so you can uh, sit down with them and you can you know lay out your uh, uh, application uh, the so you fee. need to make your payment after you read the college meet the advisor then you come up with a plan and then you make the payment before the college starts i'll advise that 
like they'll suggest you which all payment plans are, are suitable for you. So if okay. you want installments, you can lay out your installment plans, even for accommodation, since I stay in the university accommodation, they gave me an option of, you know, four installments, even okay. though uh, on the website, they'll say you need to, you know, uh, pay it in the whole. But uh, once you meet them, they'll give you, you know, they'll be flexible enough to give you some. So options. you make your payment after you get your visa, basically, right? Yeah. Got it. So after I, uh, I got my visa, I came over here, I made my payment. Since got I got it. the ground reality of what, how to pay and what all options. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Now coming back to, uh, you know, job profiles. Uh, so, suppose uh, for me, I'm since I'm looking for various companies, uh, a graduate role uh, in uh, data science or AI gives you approximately 30,000 okay. pounds per year. So, uh, which is not actually a lot in the, in London, but if you suppose, if you have an experience of three years, it's easier for you to get a job as a junior data scientist or a junior data engineer, which will fetch you a salary of say 40,000 to 45,000. And if you have much more uh, experience, it can go up to 55,000 as a starting salary. Now, as you proceed, especially in the field of AI, I have one senior who uh, entered uh, the field at 30,000 and now is earning about 75 to 80,000 pounds per year. Wow, so, that's a good jump in yeah. how many years? So he, I guess he is three to four years older than me, Got but okay. he had experience before. Understood. So even though he uh, started at 30,000, so he got a big leap. Uh, it all depends on you. But I say, uh, if for me, I, I'm aiming like for me, most of the jobs are like for from 28,000 to 35,000. Understood. Got it. Okay. You get a job uh, if you don't have an experience for 50,000 or something. Understood. Okay. Thanks for pointing out those numbers. So, yeah. Amresh, could you throw the same light on from your field as well? Because at the end of the day, the numbers is what a lot of students, you know, care about. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, starting off with my tuition fee, it was 26,000 for a one year masters and you have to pay a deposit to like secure your place basically so if you initially you play a pay a deposit and then that deposit will be added on into the tuition fee you pay so it's basically you're paying some amount as your tuition fee in the name of deposit to secure your seat once that is done then it you can uh, as as Anuj said, you can divide it according to your convenience. So I I preferred uh, dividing the amount and paying it in like two installments. But there's the and I and I think I paid one before go uh, before coming here and the other one I paid from here itself. So that was about my tuition fee. And with respect to how much you get paid here, it, it again as you said depends on the profile. But average salary over here for a graduate, for a fresh graduate, is around thirty to thirty-two thousand for for a year, which is I feel not too bad for someone who who is just out of uh, uni. And you you get I I feel thirty-two at least thirty to thirty-two thousand is it, it's a good amount to stay in London. I won't say that you you will start paying all of your bills by yourself and you will be like happy. You, you'll be having an amazing life. But definitely, it's it's a good it's a good amount for uh, a start, uh, uh, like someone who's starting their career. And with respect to that, I what I understood is that when when you are in that uh, in that spot that you need a job to start your start building your career, you I I personally don't look at what I'm getting paid uh, so much. But it, it is definitely important. But when you are in a in a uh, entry level. Uh, situation you should be open to like uh w what the role is offering more than what is the pay because, because it's going to be the base on which you will build your career later on basically exactly exactly so now if if you are getting paid say twenty eight thousand for a year and it, it is a role that you really like and you feel that it will help you to set that uh, pillar of like your career and it will basically help you grow further and definitely then then you can any any time you can switch but if you are at a stage where you need experience where you're dying to get like a good job you should just like not not keep salary as the main uh main criteria you okay. should be like more open to how much can you grow in that role got it okay 
So thank you for your answers. So coming back to you, Amrita, I'm assuming with the COVID thing almost subsiding, are most of the lectures in person or you had to do stuff online and uh, any experiences, your COVID experiences in UK? Yes, so my COVID experiences in UK, I was doing my master's in when that first lockdown of March 2020 hit. So um, at that time, so yeah, we were entirely just doing lab work at the time. So and our labs shut down completely for three months. Uh, but at the time, I mean, honestly, the amount of support that the university offered was actually very impressive. Um, because we couldn't do lab work for those three months, they offered, um, they like trained us in uh, like computational modeling and techniques like that, that we could apply to our projects. So um, we were still sort of moving ahead with our research just in a slightly different direction for a few months. Um, and then we also had like other assignments and stuff that were due around that time. So definitely still kept busy during that time. Um, and so today everything is, I'm assuming, in person? Um, yes, now everything's all, almost back to normal. I think after this sort of one and a half, two years, that there's more flexibility. So um, now if I want to work from home for a day, just do a bit of admin, things like that, that's more acceptable and that's okay. Um, some of the meetings still happen on Teams just for convenience because everyone's at different campuses and things like that. As a PhD student, I don't really have any lectures and things like that anymore, um, but I'm fairly certain all the undergraduate teachings back to in-person, but just with a little more flexibility after what's happened, yeah. Okay, great. And so you still need to mask up every time you go out and or it's, it's quite lenient now? Uh, no, it's, it is quite lenient now. Um, the university, Within the university, we are expected to wear masks indoors. Um, outside, there are no rules as such okay. anymore. Up till now, like our university would ask us to get a PCR test done every, every week and things like that. So it felt quite safe even like during a peak and stuff like that. Understood, got it. Um, now everything's calmed down, testing sort of stopping Great. now okay. as well. So. One last question for you. Why did you choose UK? Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, as you know, like I was applying in the U S as well at the time. Um, it, a lot of it was based off the programs and universities from which I got offers. Um, I really liked the, um, drug discovery masters for which I had an offer. Um, it was, it sort of fit well into my research goals. Um, again, Imperial's um, a very good university to be at for um, this sort of area of research. So um, just, it was purely on the basis of the university and the program rather than the country. Okay. Any last piece of advice for people who are applying to UK? Uh, it's a very broad question. <laughs> um, I, I think start early. Um, like, yes, yeah, start sort of doing your research and building your profile in that direction as early as you can. And then when you want to apply for jobs and things like that, don't wait to get here. Like, start thinking about what you want to do and start preparing in that direction um, just as early as you can, because what one year is, is not enough to sort of fit everything in, try and settle down and start applying for jobs. Okay, great. Thank you for your words. Uh, so coming back to you, Tanvi, uh, any last piece of advice you want to give to students who are applying? And if you want to talk about why should you choose UK over any other country, maybe it's from your experiences? Uh, so for me, I wanted to do a very quick master's because I had uh, already studied a lot for my CS and then I just wanted a degree. And then for US, I think in a lot of places they required uh, GMAT. And then you're for UK, they didn't have any such requirement. They just, uh, you just need to have like a very good uh, band in IELTS. 
that's it and uh, i think in us all the courses were two years at least and only in uk it was just for a year so that was actually easier got it okay so, so you decided so that's a good shortcut for people who want to just take a short course uh yes yeah because after studying so much for cs for agree, uh, two agree. years or two three years i didn't want to give more competitive exams understood and then i think you're only for uh, out of all plus you can actually get into a very good university here even though you don't give a competitive exam apart from lsc i think only lsc uh, requires it okay i think uh, one of the other reasons many people choose uk is you know you they are not strict about the 16th year of education which a lot of colleges in usa and canada are so you know if you've done a bcom bsc bms bba Correct. which is yeah. a 12 plus 3 then you know getting into america and canada kind of a lot of colleges need a 16th year so you know that also tilts a lot of favor for uh, for for people who want to go to uk and for people who want to be close to india as well at the same time correct so actually uh, that was one of the reasons too because that's why i didn't want to go to the us because uk still feels close <laughs> okay uh so that's why and uh, a lot of universities in us actually required i uh, mean to work for a year or two okay so i didn't have work ex in marketing field so then that's why so uh, i couldn't even apply for them got it okay. but in uk a lot of universities don't require it so i just applied yeah. okay yeah so anuj over to you some things about your life in uk that you enjoyed did you go for the wimbledon or did you go to lords to see any matches out there or and you just go out and have pims out you know just at the waterfront and you tell you tell me something about your uh, life at uk and how's it different i'm recently back from a trip from edinburgh okay so i went to scotland i went there for a week to explore i just the uh, city okay. and uh, the best thing about uh, uk is how well they have kept their heritage uh, especially scotland where they uh, you know they still have those buildings and those structures the historic monuments intact uh, even the uk they are very keen on the aesthetics of how every building and every street looks so uh, even if the building is built in like 1900s it's still you know uh, still crisp and fine uh, for entertainment i usually like we hang out uh, the accommodation i live in is a post graduate accommodation from the university and most of the people over here are indian so uh, there is not much issue for me as in i don't feel homesick or uh, uh, you know left out or something uh, in in, your, in the university i get to meet other people from various uh, countries but uh, back home like when i come home uh, i get to chill out with my indian friends so it feels like a family over here um we go out for movies and everything uh there is the, and the university you know even the university has many indian events and uh, uh like various events uh to attend which sadly you, most of the master students can't because of the course so do you work. have like holi and diwali and all these festivals at the university that you can be a part of so the, 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 the uh, university had a diwali party uh, from the indian society but uh, back here in my accommodation we had an amazing holi party with all colors and everything so uh, you do, you don't miss uh, your country much and since it's a one year course anyways you don't feel much homesick uh, the only problem is uh, okay this is an off topic but i'll, I'll suggest uh, if you are very bad at cooking uh, or if you don't have much time for cooking there are loads and loads of tiffin services over here uh, from like say cheap, from uh, 130 pounds per month to the different service i was uh, using it's like 200 pounds per month and uh, there are various options non vegetarian vegetarian so i'll suggest if if you can spare some bucks uh, in that area uh, it'll be great if you don't have to cook and some okay you can it pay up for all the so you also spoke about going to scotland right so when you get a pgwp you are eligible to work in uk scotland northern ireland what are the areas and countries that you are eligible to work in as far as i know you are eligible to work in england all over the england you can you are eligible to work in uh, scotland edinburgh uh, glasgow or you can work in belfast but you cannot go out into the eurozone basically right no 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 so uh, as as far as i know as a tourist i can apply for schengen visa i'll be applying in uh, may uh, but 
using my uk visa i can't go or work anywhere outside the uk so you will just be applying as a tourist visa to travel basically yeah 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 that to for 6 months i guess we can uh go abroad or like go to the europe for 6 months that's it so got it okay cool thanks for your answers and any last minute advice to students applying to uk why uk or anything they need to take care of their okay. applications or anything so why uk the best uh, part of uk is like uh, i'll say post grad post graduate work visa which is an amazing uh, uh, addition that they gave us last year but uh, especially i'll say for ai for data science for computer uh, science uh i'll say prefer uh, the us over the uk if you don't if you want to learn uh in depth about the subject and uh, if you want to do your uh, phd or something you need uh, a lot more than one year to understand the subjects to understand in depth of the subjects because one year course they cramp up four modules in one semester and uh, it becomes quite fast paced uh, so if you aren't that uh you know well at grasping things quickly it's it becomes quite difficult for you to uh you know keep up with the coursework and do some co curricular activities build up your git pro- github profile do some uh you know extra project so that's the main disadvantage i'll say uk has over us but rather than that uh, you know lifestyle and everything uh the work life over here it all is better than you know uh the us even okay. anywhere in the europe okay yeah. nice to hear that So you didn't answer. Still answer my question. Did you go to Wimbledon or did you go to Lords oh, or anything like nah, that? Nah. I'm yet to visit most of the museums over here. I, I okay. didn't go. My friends over here went to Manchester for a match, uh, okay. for in uh, an Old Trafford, but I couldn't attend it because of my. So I guess you will get time now after you graduate to you know catch up on all the sporting events in UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm definitely waiting for all those events, but uh, since right now I couldn't do it. uh there are various reasons there are budget crunch there are you know uh you you have assignments the next day so yeah it's difficult hopefully you will get to check your bucket list this year yes 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 okay so amresh uh, we'll close with you any uh, departing words you have for students before we open it up to q and a uh i i think the only thing i would like to share is that uh do your research properly because you 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 should keep in mind that you you going to invest a good amount of money in something that you so you you don't want to like uh, choose something that you don't like after a point of time so you do your research that and try to like uh, understand that is is this like really something i would i would want to do i'm going abroad i'm going to study is this something that it's worth so much of so much of money and basically i research is something that i i would really like because i i had certain friends who got really lost in midway during the course because they they were like i i don't think i really want to do this so i would suggest that do your research and uh with, with that i would say that obviously the 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 job the job sector here is now growing that there are like lots of startups coming up and with the with the post study work visa thing it's it, it's made like life easy now so you basically even though you after a point of time after your master you you are thinking that do i really want to like switch or go or do something else you have that two years of time to think as much as you can and then basically apply or take some time off and then start applying so there's no pressure on you after after your masters that okay now your masters is done you have like 3 months apply apply for jobs get a job otherwise you'll have to go back so that pressure is not there so if, one question just cutting you short so you have a 2 mm-hmm. year post graduate work permit now you get a job in those 2 years you work for 2 years what happens when the 2 year duration comes to an end so before that ends you your employer needs to apply for a work permit for you right so say you worked on on the uh, graduate program for with with an employee for two uh, with a company for two years and now say that you have performed really well and you know that i i if if i want to basically progress in this com- same company i the the company would have to apply for a skill worker visa for me basically so you need to get a sponsor then once that is done you need to have something solid some some company that is going to sponsor your visa which is the skilled worker visa 
and how difficult is it to get the skilled workers visa so if the company likes your job they'll just go ahead and apply for it yeah yeah so it, it again it depends on company to company say the, the company is really good they already have uh have so it's basically they have a license to uh to set you on that uh license with the company so if they have the license if they are doing it frequently so it'll just be a small code they would be sharing with you that okay this is the code when you apply for your visa just put in this code on the application and it automatically see that okay he's going to work in this company let's just give him the skilled worker visa got it yeah so usually so startups might not be having this code right so in that case yeah. you just work for 2 years and then before that two years complete you move to a company which will sponsor you basically right right yeah so i i think anuj mentioned this so when you if, if say you have uh, have the visa now you have it and you have a company approaching to you they're, they're planning to give you a, a offer and you basically don't tell them till the end that you have it and you try to make like make them say that okay we have we we can sponsor it and if they can't you you'll basically just tell them okay i'll i'll take the two years uh, post study visa thing and then you can they'll basically hire you got it Understood. yeah fine got it so i guess there'll be more clarity on it as time progresses because it's just that pg pgwp has just started so most of the people would still be on this i guess right yeah yeah and then i think that's that's pretty much it now now is like is the weather is like turning really beautiful so okay. Yeah. Great. I, so I won't I, stop you too much on your Saturday evening <laughs> in case you want to go out and have films at the waterfront. Okay. So, but we let's open it up to questions that have come in. I think you guys have been answering a lot of questions. So I thank you for that. You made a lot of life easy for me. But let's just quickly go through the question and maybe you know any one of you can pick up these answers. So Sadri has put in a question. I'm currently doing B.Sc. in Economics. I'll be graduating in 23. i want to do masters in finance in uk and am i eligible for the same and where can i apply and how can i make my profile better so maybe tanvi you want to answer this question about how should she go about with the application yes uh, so whatever university you're looking at uh, they have it very well described uh that what are their requirements so just see if you take all those boxes and if you do you should just uh, directly apply to that place okay great a uh, few more yeah. questions are too many questions i'm just scrolling through them uh khyati has a question for amrita what is the scope of drug discovery and development and does it create any problem in finding jobs since others might have a two years masters um so all the masters in the uk are one year so i mean it it depends on whether you want to try applying somewhere in another country after that but um it's it's not a disadvantage locally at least so you um, also mentioned you came and worked in india right so do you think yes. that having a one year masters is going to create problems if you want to come back to india and work or it's not a problem at all uh i personally didn't have too many issues with it uh But with covid and everything i was looking for like a remote working job at the time so i was working with uh, cactus communications as an editor for pharmaceutical sciences and i mean i i only applied to a couple of companies and it, it was not too difficult honestly it, i didn't have any issues do you think that companies in india valued your masters degree from abroad do you think that helped you get a better job um it that is hard to say because i i didn't i honestly didn't apply to a whole range of companies and i didn't necessarily apply within research so it's it's hard okay. to say okay. but i think especially with the job that i was doing the skills that i gained here made a huge difference in terms of like scientific communication scientific writing and things like that got it okay thank you for your answer a question from pranav and i think uh, anuj has already answered it but i'm still just going to you know present it out for others i've done uh, competitive programming through c++ what else i is needed to get internship in third year and anuj has replied that you need to do competitive programming 
and you want to develop certain skills like front-end development, full-stack development, and learn technology stacks like Angular, JS, React, etc. Uh, Vikram has a question related to King's College. Uh, once again, I think the question is lost. I'll come back to it. Uh, Samiksha has a question. What is the scope for international business management or IBM with project management and which are the booming courses in UK? I guess Tanvi might be the right person to answer this. Uh, so for me, it was very specific. So that's why I chose marketing. But then Imperial has got a very um, nice course, which, has, which is, I think, Masters in Business, Innovation and Entrepreneurship. So then there are a lot of option modules that you can choose. And I mean, in the area that you're actually interested in. Okay. And then, so it. the course, yeah, if the course is broad enough, then you can choose the modules uh, the way you like it. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Shruti had asked a question, what are the scholarships you can apply for? And I think Amrita has already answered. You can look at Indian scholarships like Inlax, Tata, Mahindra, Sheikh Sarya, Aga Khan. There are quite a few out there. Even it's listed on the College Pond website as well. Uh, Samiksha has a question for Anuj. How are the course fees in Queen Mary high or is it affordable? And can we get an ILTS waiver if you are from University of Mumbai? Uh, so it totally depends for, for uh, Queen Mary, it totally depends which course are doing for me, uh, since they are doing an amazing job in teaching all the uh, uh, modules uh, in AI, it's the fees are quite reasonable compared to other universities in London. Uh, but uh, let's say for my friends in, you know, international human resources, I will say it's not uh, that worth it because they don't have that that many lectures per week and they don't have that many seminars to compensate for the fees that they're paying, that's 30 lakhs approximately for uh, human resources. Uh, and the curriculum is not that you know good compared to other universities in London. So it totally depends which course you want to do and uh, which, uh, you know, uh, how's the return on investment of that course. So for me, I guess it's quite, you know, the fees are quite reasonable for my course or if you're doing big data, AI or something related to technology. But for, uh, let's say it feels like uh, HR or something. Queen Mary is not the best university for those fees. Uh, if you are doing law or if you are doing dentistry, uh, I'll say I'll suggest Queen Mary in those uh, regions, but not in uh, management or finance. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marmik had asked a question to Anu. Just like Stint, there are many apps that provide part-time work. And I think Anuj has replied, there are apps like Cooper, Limber, Indeed, Flax. And if you want part-time jobs, you can start with jobs today. Uh, thank you, Anuj, for your answer. Uh, you should apply for an NI number if you want to work in the UK, it's similar to the PAN cards that we have. Okay, can we apply for the NI number after coming there or do I have to apply from India? I think Anuj has already answered. Uh, you can do it only after you come there and you can get the NI number from four to 16 weeks. So Anuj, only after you apply and get your NI number, can you start working? Is that correct? Oh, no, it's not It's not that because uh, I used to work uh, in uh, the pub before I got my NI number. But okay. since uh, for like, I, I, I used to get paid 11 pounds, but uh in hand i used to get 8.9 because i didn't have my ni number uh but once you get your ni number you can claim your tax back from hrmc uh okay. it's not a big deal but i'll suggest that as soon as you get uh in the uk uh you start applying for ni number okay great uh two three questions have come in if it's a generic question if someone can answer uh what is the scope for doing sports analytics in UK, what is the scope for bioinformatics in UK? If anyone can throw answers on that. Um, I guess I can talk a little bit about bioinformatics. Okay. Um, I'm not specifically in that field, but I know that um, quite a lot of the pharma companies and startups, they, they definitely do have jobs within that sort of area. So. Um, I think you would sort of have to do your research and see what the openings are, but I know that they do exist. Okay, cool. Uh, Shitij had asked a question, how do you know if there are any seats available for a particular course on the King's website? 
and Amresh has already answered, usually the admission committee do not openly reveal if how many seats are available. You can email and ask them if they are still accepting applications or not. Okay. Uh, is it difficult to get into KCL for masters and what are the requirements? Again, I think that would depend on the program. You should check out the website. Uh, another question has come in from Marmik. What are the requir documents required for CAS? Can anyone answer that? Uh, I'll say instead of uh, asking it to us, uh, it's best to ask the uh, experts in College Pond uh, because that's what I did. And uh, okay. they helped me a lot uh, regarding all this because it's been six months. I don't remember quite well what exact all documents are required. But yeah, I'll say just shoot a uh, message on Converge. Fine. We, we, we'll okay. we'll have a checklist sent across, no problem. Uh, yeah. Deep has a question. Russell Group Universities charge a lot. Is it worth paying an extra price for just the Russell Group tag? Uh, in Russell Group, suppose like if uh, it's in high tier, like it's a King College or uh, say uh, Imperial, I'll say it's uh, quite worthy for a master's, uh, master's in finance if you're paying 35K, but not uh, to uh, the universities who are ranked lower in Russell Group. So the tag is not you know, like uh, an Ivy League college in, that we have in the US. So it's it's not that important tag in the UK. So there are colleges which are uh, ranked lower in Russell groups, but uh, those universities uh, are not much different than the other universities that are at the same rankings. So the Russell group tag is not much worth it. Uh, it's so, like- uh, So just cutting you short. So do you think that, uh, you know, if you are from Russell group or you are from a non-Russell group, is there a huge difference in the kind of jobs that you might get? Or the difference it, is not that substantial? It's not uh, important. Uh, like the Russell group tag is not important. It's like if you're from Imperial, from, if you're from Kings, it's an important tag. But it's not an important tag if you're from a Russell Group University. It's, it's not similar to the Ivy League we have in the U US. Got it. Okay. A few questions that come about TOEFL and IELTS, and I think Anuj had also answered. If you got a 105 plus in TOEFL or a 7 plus in IELTS, I think you should be able to meet all the requirements of almost all the universities out there. Okay. <clears throat> um, a question has come to me. Do we have any tie up with Ivy League colleges like Imperial? I don't think we have a tie up with Imperial, but I think we have a tie up with UCL and Kings. You will have to again recheck with my team at College Pond. I'm not aware of all the colleges that we have a tie up with. But yes, I think other than LSE, Imperial, Oxford and Cambridge, we might have a tie up with the remaining colleges. Okay. Uh, CAS stands for Confirmation of Acceptance. I'm applying to these, these colleges. Okay. I think we've covered all the questions that have come in. Let me quickly see if any more questions. Uh, uh, what is the validity of the skilled worker visa? Can anyone answer that? I, I think it, it depends on like how, how, how long you want to be in with the company. So if I, what what I know is you get the skill worker visa when you when you like work there as a proper employee, and I think it you should be good with it. I think it's valid up until you work with with that company. Okay, I, that, I think as far I think. as I have heard is you get a two year work permit and that keeps on getting renewed till you yeah. work with your employer. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that that should be. The and case. I think in five years you can apply for a PR as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it's now that it's uh, point based. So it's basically you keep on like getting points and score basically for your PR application. Got it. Okay. As, yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, I want to apply for fall 22 as the deadline passed to do. I have some time. Anshika, that will again depend on the college and the course because all colleges and courses will have different deadlines. You can connect with us separately in case you want and maybe we'll help answer that question to you. Uh, Neha has put in a question. I will be doing my batch, bachelor's in physiotherapy and I want to do master's in physiotherapy. Will the being in a medical profession, will a degree be recognized in India because it is a one year program? So will India accept this or 
you need a two years master's program. Can anyone answer that question? Uh, I'm not entirely sure about um, physio specifically. Um, I, I know for like general MBBS courses and stuff, they now have a um, exit exam in India that you need to give to get recognition. So I think you would sort of have to look in that direction, see if they have anything similar. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, another question is asked, how much does ILTS band matter? I think Vikram has put in that question. I would say that as long as you meet the requirement put in by the university, you are fine. So if the university says they want a 6.5 and you are a 6.5, it's fine. Then it doesn't matter whether you are a 7 or a 9. I think it's just a requirement that you need to pass your admit will not be determined on that that will be more determined on your grades your essays how early you apply etc uh marmik has asked a question websites recommended for accommodation i think uh, tanvi has already mentioned go britannia londonist and casita.com so thank you for that uh Another question has come up. How do you prepare for an interview by Chintarla? I think Chintarla, can you be a little bit more specific in terms of what kind of interview are you talking about? So, you know, maybe we can address that. Uh, and another question from Shitij is, is there any scope of finance left in London because of the numerous tax havens that are surrounding London? Anyone can maybe answer that question related to, I don't know, maybe with the Brexit coming in and I don't know whether Brexit affected you guys or did you guys think that because of Brexit, a lot of companies moved out of London? Can anyone maybe answer that question? I, I think because of Brexit, uh, it's now more important for the government to like start building things for because it's like a standalone thing now. And okay. I think the it, it they are they are doing really good in terms of funding new startups so as far as i know i i've come across like lots and lots of startups here in london it's, mm -hmm. even in like finance I, I feel london is like the financial hub and there's a lot there's lots of i i had a few friends who did their uh, masters in banking and finance for from kings and they've got like really good jobs they've, they've landed good jobs in like kpmg and uh, the big fours so I feel it. I, I won't say that it's there's there's no scope. There's definitely scope. There always be scope for finance in London. And with that, I would suggest that if if you like if you're coming here with respect to like job job perspective, you should look at more more. You look you should look more towards startups now. So because okay. yeah, they need lots of people and they're they're basically expanding every day. Got it. So again, I just figured out that all of you are actually from London itself. Is it a coincidence that you actually all ended up choosing London only? Or was it just that the university happened to be there? And if being outside London, let's say you are in Bristol or Birmingham or Bath or being in a suburb or a university town, do you think that's going to make a big difference when you are applying for jobs? I don't think so. Uh, you know, being outside London makes a big uh, difference uh, for jobs in the, in the jobs perspective, because uh, 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 anyways, everyone's applying online for jobs. It's not like companies are coming to the universities and asking, uh, like uh, putting up their stalls for jobs. So uh, even if you're uh, uh, in any remote city or village in, uh, in the UK, you can apply for a job in London. So it's not a big uh, deal if you're outside the London. If you're outside London, uh, it's just that uh, I chose an university that happened to be in London, and uh, that had an amazing campus. So yeah, that's why I'm. Okay, great. I think we have covered all the questions that have come in so far, and you know it's been almost about two hours. So first of all, I again take this time to thank all of you all for all the information that you have shared. And I'm sure your juniors will definitely benefit from this. So sincere, sincere thanks to all of you for your time on a Saturday evening, afternoon. Uh, I wish you all a very uh, wonderful weekend. And, you know, I mean, I thank you guys for the time and, you know, the spending about two hours on a weekend. 
and like i said college pond is always there with you all in case you need any help from my side as well we'll be more than happy to be in touch with you okay uh marmik has just one last question uh, what is the average monthly expense a student can expect okay so tanvi has already answered anywhere between 800 to 1000 pounds uh, great can i just chip in sure, sure, please, as well please. um so i guess something important to keep in mind with respect to that is when you're applying for um, your visa the uk government website states a very specific value for maintenance funds that you need to show so outside of london that is about um 1000 pounds and within london that's about like 1300 something like that that changes every year so sort of keep an eye on that because those are the funds that you need to show and usually that's sort of the accurate amount that you got it right required. so you need to show that for people applying for visa you need to show the funds for about 28 days in your bank statement or you show a loan letter you know yes. before your visa purpose so i'd be more about visa and all later on uh but again thank you so much to all the panelists out here uh have a good time in london and hopefully this summer you all can be a part of wimbledon uh, you know go to lords and watch a cricket match or you know just go out see the formula 1 explore around i i remember coming to london about 10 years ago going trekking at the finger lakes and all the beautiful places out there to go and visit so i hope you get time to explore all these things outside your uh, your college hours and all of you who are graduating and hunting for jobs good luck to all of you all and in case you need to run your cv by me run your cover letter or you want to do a mock interview setup please drop an email to me and we'll take it forward from Thank you so much guys have a wonderful thank day. you